Hey, Tommy from the Run Testers, and welcome to the monthly roundup where we run through some of the kit that we've tested over the last month that we rate. And it tends to be kit that we don't normally do videos for. So these are things that we've tested out on the run and we've just wanted to tell you about them. So let's dive in and see what we've all picked this month. My first pick for the monthly essentials in November is the Nathan Hypernite Reflective Convertible Glove Mitts. Uh, these are £28 in the UK, about $35 in the US, and they are soft running gloves that you can convert into a full mitten, you know, as you wish on the run, which is something I'm a big fan of. Obviously, you've got that reflective print on the back there, which helps visibility. You've got lots of nice silicon strips on there that helps you hold a phone or whatever else if you're holding something on the run, and they've got touchscreen compatible pads as well. But really, the key here is that they're really warm. Like, I tend to need warmer gloves than most runners. I consistently get chill blains every year, and you know, Nathan says these are designed for temperatures around like zero degrees centigrade, but I've been using them kind of between like 10 and 15 in the UK very happily here because my hands get really, really cold. So yeah, I love them. They're really warm. I like that you can convert them to mitten, which does make them feel much warmer, and they're actually quite tactile, useful gloves that you can hold things and you know, get things out of a running belt or a pocket quite easily with if you're using them in glove form. The thing is, they're not that easy to tuck away when in mitten form. Like a lot of convertible gloves like this will have like a little button so you can hold the mitten in but overall big fan of them using them for most of my runs now until I convert to like a really thick kind of waterproof mitten when it gets even colder because I really hate having cold hands. Uh, my second pick this month is the Saw Wooltech Top. Used this a lot last year and it's come out of my uh, closet again in November this year. It's just a quite lightweight but really very cozy uh, top that you can use for all kinds of runs and that's really why I like it so much like a lot of saws gear like it's warm and long sleeved but it's not at all restrictive like you can just go all out in this and run very fast if you want to like I used it when running at a park run all out recently use it for track sessions it's just I don't feel like it's restrictive at all like sometimes you know when you are running fast you just want to put on a vest and just be completely free and run as hard as you can but feel like pulling this top on I can go out and do sessions hard long runs you know when the temperature is quite cold uh, and it's just the right level of warmth and the, and the right level of coziness so you feel like you're still running hard but you're protected well from the elements like it is very expensive like a lot of saws gear you know it's 165 quid in the UK 204 dollars in the US yeah that's a price that you just might not ever want to pay for running gear which is fair enough but if you do get it you're going to get a great soft top that feels great next to skin is just perfect for those harder runs when you don't want to be layering up too much but you also don't go out there just in like a vest or with arm warmers on you want a little bit of extra kind of warmth so yeah big fan of the Waltec top something that I wear a lot at this time of year and then my last pick this month is the very rustly I won't hold it too much it's the, it's the Under Armour Storm Outrun the Cold jacket which has got this very jazzy print that's also incredibly reflective like a lot of these sections will light up like a Christmas tree on the run if you're reflecting the lights. Uh, it's a windproof and water resistant jacket uh, and you know a fairly thin layer but actually it's a lot warmer and a lot more kind of water resistant than I thought it would be. So I've been using it runs where it's just been raining pretty hard and it does basically work as well as a waterproof. Like if you're going to be in conditions where this jacket isn't going to be warm or waterproof enough it's going to be really unpleasant <laughs> and uh, it's the kind of conditions that I will generally try and avoid running in if I possibly can but yeah if you're in a full storm it's not going to be fully waterproof but I was out for an hour and I think it rained pretty solidly for like 45 minutes of that and it you know, did keep the water at bay. You know, it wasn't very hard rain or anything like that but it's more water resistant than a lot of jackets than call themselves water resistant is how I describe it. It's also kind of warmer than you think like it feels like quite a lightweight shell but actually does trap a lot of warmth against the body there so you can go out in quite cold conditions with just a, you know, a thin base layer underneath and you're going to be warm enough on the run so I think it ends up being a pretty practical all-round jacket unless you're really up against it with very cold temperatures or very wet conditions when you will want something a bit thicker and a bit more waterproof. Most of the time though it is going to do you just fine. It's quite a nice looking jacket as well. It's also pretty good value. It's £105 in the UK, $150 dollars in the US. Uh, it does pack into a pocket quite easily. You can stuff it into a little sack there if you want to put it in a backpack. There's no like band or anything to carry it though. Uh, it's got a couple of outside pockets and interior right-sided pocket you can put your phone in but it's not the best positioning like it's will bounce a little bit on the run. And then the fit is quite interesting. It's quite a short fit, which I quite like. I'm wearing a small in this. The way it fits works really well for me because you can wear it comfortably over and just a lightweight base layer and it fits quite close to the skin. I don't like my jacket to be too big and flappy on the run. My first pick this month is the Seiski Classic Blaze Long Sleeve Top. Now this is pretty simple. It's a long sleeve running top with Seiski design on the back of it. Um, but the thing about this top that I find quite good is that 
it's quite a thick top so i i've had this for a few weeks now and it's been too warm it's been too mild to run in it it's it's quite a warm top um, but I went, I went running in it today it's quite cold it was raining it was windy today and that's when this top really starts to come into its own because it's quite a soft comfortable design it's it's quite nice to wear it's it's um not too tight i'm a medium and the medium in in uh, this top is quite comfortable it's not too um restrictive like i find in some running tops so it's a nice comfortable top to wear but i would reserve this for colder days so today was a perfect example for it i didn't need to wear a jacket with this it was just very comfortable there's not really any features on it that are worth mentioning there's a few little design elements that have seiski on it's quite a nice looking top i'd probably be happy to wear this when i'm not running um, but overall it's just a very good solid running top that will keep you warm until it gets really cold and you need to pop a jacket over the top of it but other than that just a good top my second pick this month are the Shox Open Run Mini Bone Conduction headphones. Now we have tested out the original Open Run Pros and the Open Run headphones and recently Shox has released an updated version of both which is the Mini and the only difference is that there, there's a smaller uh, band around the outside. It's a very small change, but it makes a big difference when you're out on the run because what I found with the previous versions of Shox, they were just a bit too big for me. They, they stuck out the back of my head quite a bit and they just weren't as comfortable as these. These mini versions are absolutely perfect because they, they just sit closer to the head. They're more comfortable to wear. They still have the exact same technical features as the previous versions. Now the Open Run Pros are the updated version of the Open Runs. In reality, the differences are quite minimal, but there is a slightly noticeable sound difference that you get from the Open Run Pro. So you do get better sound from these than you will in the Open Runs. If cost isn't a massive factor for you and you want to get a slightly better sound from the Open Runs, then the Open Run Pros do give you that. There's just a little bit better audio quality and the sound is just slightly better when you're out on the run. So if you do want to invest a little bit more in the uh, open run pros then you will get a little bit of an uplift in that sound quality but if you want to save some of the open run originals are very good and probably the better choice to get if you're looking for something that's cost effective the open run pro mini is also coming in this nice little case which is really useful actually because i find that i'm always losing my bone conduction shocks headphones i sort of put them in drawers they're quite hard to see and find so in this case, it sort of keeps them nice and neat and means they don't get scrunched up in the bottom of your bag and risk being broken at some point. So it's a nice little feature to add to it and it does make a nice little difference to them. So the Open Run Pro Minis, great choice if you're looking to get bone conduction headphones, but uh, the Open Run Pros are a little bit big for you um, and just a slightly better sound than the Open Runs. So the third pick I have this month is the Provis Reflect 360 Carbon. Now this is a running top that is designed for running at night. So it has loads of reflective elements down the sides, reflective elements on the back, and a few dotted around on the front as well, so that you can be seen when you're out running on the road. And um, it's a nice safety, Provis basically makes safety kit. Um, that doubles as running kit as well. So it's a nice thing to have if you're really focused on safety. And where I run, uh, it can be quite dangerous out on the roads because there's a lot of cars around and there's a lot of windy streets. So I often come out um, from streets and I don't know what's around the corner straight away. So I need to be seen when I'm out running at night. Um, but the thing about the uh, Reflect 360 Carbon is that it is quite a thick top. So I I wouldn't ever wear this in mild temperatures. I'd get very, very hot. I'm the sort of runner that can get very sweaty very quickly. So even in the winter, I do run in t-shirts. I do run in vests because I get hot within about two kilometers of running. So I'd only reserve this for the really cold days and it's starting to get colder now. Um, so I've, I've popped this on a few times and it really is very warm. It's one of the warmest long sleeve tops I've, I've ever worn. Provis do tend to make quite thick warm kit that I would only reserve for the um, coldest of temperatures um, but it is quite a comfortable top as well it's it's got this quarter length zip at the front so if you are hot you can zip it down a bit to uh, let a bit of the hot air out um, and it's just a nice comfortable relaxed fit as well so it's not tight it's not restrictive in any way um, and I do enjoy wearing this when the weather really does drop low 
It also has my favorite feature on any running top and that's thumb loops. I always like a thumb loop on uh, my running tops. Don't know why, um, but I just find it more comfortable to have that looped in uh, and these do have those and they work very well. It's also made of a nice stretchy fabric so it will fit nicely to most people and give a little bit of extra stretch when you need it. There's UPF plus 30 sun protection uh, in this, but to be honest, I don't think I'd ever wear this when that was an issue because I I'd largely use this when I'm running at night when it's really cold. But if you are running out in the day um, and you it's sunny, um, then it has that protect protection in it if you need it. <laughs> So the first of my kind of monthly picks are these Steigen socks. I've had my feet in loads of different pairs of these. They come up slightly thinner than something like the Brave or Stance socks that we've had in our best socks video, which you can find on the channel here. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit thinner to slip into your shoes, these are a really good bet. They come in lots of different sizes from kind of zero, so invisible uh, under the ankle line, up to quarter, half, three quarters length. They also come in larger sizes. So if you've got bigger feet, actually you can dive in and get some of these as well. They also come in lots of really wild patterns, a bit like the Brave socks. There's some excellent ones to check out. I really gotta love these kind of planetary ones. They've got an almost kind of seamless kind of toe area as well, which is great. So there's nothing there for potential kind of rubbing. And they've got these kind of excellent sort of reinforced cuffs, which keep them in place up the leg. Super comfortable, lovely patterns, really good fun. So now that things have been turning a little bit colder, I've been looking for items that can kind of keep me a little warmer on my runs. And this is a great one. This is the On Running Performance Net Gator. Now, like all things on, this comes with a premium price. It's 32 pounds, so it's a lot more than a kind of freebie buff that you're gonna get at a race or even a buff itself. But I actually think it's worth the extra spend and I'll go through a few reasons why I think that's the case. First thing up, this is a lot more robust. The material is much thicker, much more durable much longer lasting than some of those kind of freebie buffs that you get at races or kind of thin kind of neck tubulars whatever you want to call them we're not really supposed to call them buffs this one is definitely more substantial than that so i think this is kind of built to last i, I know i'm going to get multiple years out of this for a start but the main thing that i really love about it is that it's got this kind of really nice kind of brushed kind of fleece lining to it which really does act as a kind of thicker barrier against the wind super comfortable on the neck it, you know, if you tuck it down, it stops kind of drafts getting down. You can kind of have it up and wrap it over your face for extra protection. Sometimes if you're going on mountain runs and you hit the tops, you want to do that. It also has some reflective detailing kind of there. So that's also good for you know, dark night kind of safety. Overall, just really super comfortable, super durable and a really good way to keep warm on those winter runs. Now, speaking of winter runs, the other thing that happens when the clocks shift over here in the UK, obviously it gets darker. It seems to be dark all the time. It's dark in the morning, it's dark in the evening. Where I run, I run along the River Thames and there's a path that has no street lights. It's still the place that I like to go and run. So I have to invest in a kind of nice, easy, lightweight head torch. And one of my favorites of all time, I love BioLite headlamps. And this is the BioLite Headlamp 425. It's been updated. Uh, my favorite things about it, it's got this really nice um, sort of flat headband that sits across the forehead and keeps it nicely in place. It's really comfortable. The material is nice against the skin. The headlamp itself kicks out a powerful 425 lumen beam. Uh, you get four hours of runtime with it on full blast. So that's a good amount to cover most runs that you'll need. And this anti-bounce band is also sweat wicking so it doesn't get too wet and damp and sort of, you know, it doesn't get heavy. The whole thing is really lightweight. It weighs just 78 grams. It's USB-C chargeable. You can also run a battery pack straight through the headlamp. So if you've got a battery pack, you can keep it running the whole time and it will, it will light whilst it charges as well, which is great. It's, it's brilliant for those kind of shorter runs. I do it for 10Ks, but it's also good to have in your backpack if you're going on kind of ultras and, and trail runs where you're gonna need some short periods of kind of, of light as well. So yeah, all round, I think this is brilliant. You know, the USB-C chargeable thing also means that you're not scrabbling around in drawers for spare triple A's right before your run. It's always there and ready to go. When I first got the on running zero jacket, I just, I really didn't get it at all because it seemed just like so lightweight. That I was like, well, this is a waste of money. Um, I was like, well, it's not completely waterproof and it's not that warm, but actually that is exactly why it's brilliant. So it's water resistant, um, and but it's still got the meshes under the arms. Um, and it's so light that it keeps the rain off, um, but it's, 
you can run like a pace session in it, a full out session, and it's totally fine. You don't get too hot or anything. But also the thing I've used it for is getting up early in the mornings when there's that chill and you're like, I know once I get going, I'm not going to need a long sleeve top. Or if it's raining, it's like, it's, I'm going to be fine once I get going, but I just really don't want to get out of the door. Put that on. And then as soon as I get into that phase where I'm like, I don't care, um, just bundle it up and shove it in like the tiniest of pockets. And it's absolutely fantastic for that. I'm taking it everywhere with me because it's so tiny and it doesn't weigh anything. It's 60 grams, which apparently is the same weight as a small kiwi. I've been trying the Mari Empower Medium Impact Sports Bra uh, this month. Um, it comes in this lovely red colour um, and it is very supportive, even though it's only medium, apparently. Um, I mean, I'm not the biggest so i don't need maximum maximum support but i still need plenty um it's got these kind of bands that go around the side and then it's got this um particular kind of um overband technology that sits across the top of your breasts uh, to help with the kind of up and down movement um and you definitely felt really um held in place it's kind of the same sort of feeling as a shock absorber that kind of thing um but looks a lot prettier um so yeah it's it's much more of like a halter neck kind of feel around the neck so it does feel like it's kind of up around the top of your shoulders um a lot more than some other sports bras which takes took me a couple of runs to get used to but now i don't even notice it and um and it's great a long time ago saw running did some of the best women's running tops out there and then they stopped doing women's gear but thankfully they are back at it and i've been trying out their marathon shorts they are the lightest weight shorts. Um, they're short shorts, so they're definitely for race. They're good for racing, um, but they've got this laser um, cut finish, which means that they don't have a hem. So uh, there's none of that kind of weight there, and they just—I mean, you barely know you're wearing them, which is incredible. Um, waistband's super comfortable. The liner's comfortable. There's no chafing. I've done lots of running in them, no problems. They've got storage for four gels in the back pockets, a zip pocket, and then loads of uh, loops at the front to store more gels. The only problem I've had is if you're using high five gels, they're not really thick enough to sit in those gel loops. But I've been chatting to Saw about that, so they're aware of it. And I think that's something they're looking into. So my first monthly essential pick is something I've actually had for a couple of months, but it's only really been until this month where I've really been able to put it to the test. And it is this, the North Face Light Riser Future Light Jacket. Now, this is... 290 pounds so it is not cheap it's definitely a expensive jacket to invest in but for me in terms of the waterproofing that you're getting here and that i've experienced in my runs it's been very very good now north face is using kind of future light kind of material here that's what they're going to call it they don't really kind of delve into what that is but ultimately that's to create something that's breathable and waterproof now I have run in light rain this month. I run in kind of something a bit heavier. I had one club run where it was treacherous uh, and I thought it was inevitable that I was just gonna get soaked during that run. And actually in terms of those runs, the waterproofing side of things, it's been very, very good. I've been able to take my jacket off and actually most of my clothes has just been, it's been relatively dry and I've not been soaked through. So from that point of view and the waterproofing point of view, I've tested it pretty intensely over this month in terms of the level of rain it's been through and it's been very, very good for me. So from that point of view, the waterproofing, very, very good. Other little things that I really liked about it, the weight of it, I don't like running in a heavy jacket. This weighs kind of 200 grams. It feels nice and light. It's thin as well. Um, it's just another layer, another thin layer to have on top of a t-shirt or a kind of base layer, which is how I kind of generally um, wore it i think uh the kind of reflective elements of it are very strategically placed uh, and i've run at night with it and those i think do help in terms of visibility so that is a good thing here i like the sleeves that are kind of um kind of wrap quite nicely against the arm but it does give you kind of that scope to kind of if you're wearing it with a watch and most people will be then you can kind of kind of pull that over um it's quite easy to look over your watch if you're kind of keeping an eye on your stats, which I always am. Uh, and also I like the corded elements. Now you've got the corded elements at the kind of the bottom of the jackets to kind of pull them in, which is always great. But what one thing I didn't notice until a, a couple of runs in is that you've got that cord on the hood as well. So if you want to wear that hood and I've worn it with or without a cap and kind of tighten things up so you've got that protection over the head as well was initially it was kind of floating about a little bit for me in the wind, but actually pulling in that cord and you get a kind of stronger protection. Now you can pack away this jacket into the pocket at the back. The pocket has been a bit weird for me. The zip has got a little bit tight against the um, against the material. So I don't think it's the best 
kind of pocket and also if you put something even slightly heavy in there you can feel it bouncing around a little bit like I put a headphones case in there and you can notice it there I think if you're putting something in a little bit lighter then that's ultimately not an issue but even any, anything with a little bit of weight you do seem to notice it and that's only really the, the only pocket you're getting here on this jacket but from a waterproofing point of view which is the main reason I would be wearing this or what I would put it on it's been very very good it's probably been one of the best waterproof kind of jackets I've used um, so from that point of view very very strong it looks great I love the color it is expensive but if you're looking for a good looking waterproof uh, running jacket that doesn't restrict you in terms of movement um, has kind of good kind of gives you a nice kind of uh, tight feel in terms of the the fit from the hood to the kind of the body of the jacket as well you get that here as well and yeah it's been a, a very good jacket to use and an ideal jacket to use and test over this month considering we've had horrible rainy conditions uh, in the UK so my second monthly essentials pick are these these are the halo pure free bco1 now these are sporty bone conduction headphones that are priced at 99 pounds 99 in the uk and a hundred and twenty dollars in the us that puts it in slightly cheaper than the shocks open run and from a performance point of view i would say these pretty much match the shocks open run in terms of the design in terms of the sound performance and in terms of things like battery life now i'll start with the good and the good is as i said this is pretty much a clone in terms of the shocks open run in terms of the design it's probably a couple of grams heavier than uh, the shocks open run but they're made from a similar kind of titanium alloy in terms of your, what you're getting in the frame you're getting similar layout of physical buttons so one on the outer uh, and then some underneath on the headphones you're getting a proprietary charging cable which is disappointing but ultimately that's what you're going to get here but it's similar to the charging cable that you get on the shocks headphones as well um with those controls you can adjust volume you can skip tracks you can summon your smartphone uh, assistant as well and you can take calls in because there's uh, microphones built into these headphones as well now from a sound performance i would say they pretty much match what i've experienced on the shocks open run i think the overall sound profile is very balanced um, there's definitely a heavier weight and emphasis in terms of vocals and in terms of that clarity and detail but there's a little bit of warmth in there as well which actually creates something a bit richer in terms of that overall sound performance now i would say so when you're outside and you're battling with more noise or external noise you know there is always going to be issues in terms of uh what you get you know how that's going to interact or interfere with your your sounds ultimately i think it's a good balance in terms of what you get here on the halo headphones you know i never thought that it you know wind or kind of traffic was really drowning out my audio so that was definitely a positive in the gym it was a similar story as well if you kind of crank that volume up a little bit louder then it's ultimately fine in terms of still giving you a sense of what's going on around you but you're still being able to hear your own audio as well now you're getting a little bit of leakage here as well ultimately that's what you're going to get with bone conduction headphones it's definitely worse when you listen a bit louder moderate levels it's not too bad in terms of other things uh, battery life eight hours there's a fast charging feature as well which gets you up to two hours playtime off kind of 10 to 15 minutes of charge um the other things you're getting kind of multi uh, point pairing as well here that was one of the weaker elements for me it didn't really work for me but from a kind of stability in terms of the connection and pairing to my different devices it was absolutely fine it was just pairing between multiple devices that didn't you know kind of work for me but ultimately if you're looking for a pair of bone conduction headphones that are slightly cheaper than the shocks open run at kind of retail you know, RIP um, offers similar in terms of sound profile similar level of kind of bone conduction performance battery life and a similar de design as well and these are definitely well worth looking at they were very solid for me over the month uh, and I'd have no hesitations picking these up if I wanted to wear a pair of bone conduction headphones for my runs so that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon and check the channel for all the other videos we've got. And if you haven't listened to it yet, we've also got our monthly podcast. So if you go into the caption below, you can find a link to the podcast provider of your choice. And the most recent version of the podcast that we've done is the Run Testers Awards. Uh, so every year we do an awards for the best kit, shoes, headphones, watches that has been released over the past year. And it's all in the podcast. You can also find that in a video on the channel as well. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.